In the midst of our modern era, where humans enjoy the safety and comfort provided by technological advancements, the haunting howl of a wolf can still evoke a spine-tingling sensation. These formidable creatures, known for their pack hunting and ability to bring down large prey, possess an innate power that commands respect. Although rare, instances of wolf attacks on humans have been documented throughout history. Among them, the chilling tale of the Wolf of Gisinge stands out as the most lethal lone wolf ever to roam the earth, claiming the lives of 11 children and one adult over a period of three months. Interestingly, most attacks on humans are inflicted upon children, a pattern that holds true even for the world's deadliest wolf, with only two exceptions where it targeted an 18-year-old and a 19-year-old. Ordinarily, wolves tend to fear and avoid humans and their settlements. By selecting children as its victims, the wolf tactically minimizes the threat it faces. While it is a rarity for wolves to attack humans or display any interest in human settlements due to their inherent fear, the wolf of Gisinge defied this norm, but not without reason. Historical records reveal a captivating narrative behind the attacks, tracing back to the capture of the wolf as a pup in 1817. Astonishingly, it was raised as a pet for several years. This seemingly innocent decision proved to be a fatal mistake. When wolves are domesticated and kept as pets, they gradually lose their instinctual fear of humans, paving the way for the wolf of Gissinger's transformation into a fearsome predator. Eventually, wolves may come to realize that humans are not as formidable as they initially perceive, thereby considering them potential prey. Such was the case with the Wolf of Gisinge, which grew weary of its captive existence and sought freedom. The exact time frame in which the wolf transitioned to hunting humans remains uncertain, but its transformation into the deadliest wolf in history is well documented. The Wolf of Gisinge left a chilling trail of 31 attacks on human beings, resulting in the deaths of 12 individuals and leaving 19 others wounded. Most of the victims were young children, while a 19-year-old woman fell victim to the wolf's ferocity and an 18-year-old man suffered injuries during the onslaught. Tragically, by the time the victims were discovered, many of them had been partially consumed by the relentless predator. What makes these attacks even more terrifying is the astonishingly short period in which they occurred. Between December 30, 1820, and March 27, 1821, the Wolf of Gisinge launched its relentless assault, averaging an attack every three days over the course of three months. It is a testament to the wolf's exceptional capabilities that it orchestrated this carnage entirely on its own. To describe it as an apex predator would be an understatement, as its reign of terror remains unmatched in its ruthlessness and efficiency. The Wolf of Gisinge, a formidable gray wolf, possessed a weight ranging from 80 to 150 pounds and was equipped with sharp teeth and impressive speed that could easily outpace any human. While a lone wolf could overpower even a strong adult, this particular wolf demonstrated cunning by targeting the weakest and most vulnerable individuals. The extent to which the wolf's captivity influenced its inclination and willingness to pursue humans remains uncertain. However, it is plausible that the wolf recognized the relative vulnerability of unarmed humans, which may have contributed to its choice of prey. Wolves typically thrive and hunt in packs, utilizing their predatory prowess to exhaust and overcome adversaries. However, the wolf of Gisinge lacked a pack due to its upbringing among humans. Upon escaping captivity and embarking on its killing spree, it operated as a solitary predator. It is unlikely that the wolf employed the same hunting strategies as a lone hunter compared to its pack hunting counterparts. Instead, it likely targeted its small and feeble victims directly, aiming for swift kills. An intriguing aspect of these attacks is the fact that the wolf consumed parts of its human victims. While wolf-human predation is uncommon, this particular wolf deviated from the norm by exhibiting such behavior toward its victims. Eventually, word spread about the wolf's reign of terror, prompting decisive action. On March 27, 1821, the world's deadliest wolf met its demise. Regrettably, no specific details regarding the methods employed to kill the wolf of Gisinge have been recorded, 
but considering the time period, it is likely that firearms were utilized. Undoubtedly, the era of the Wolf of Gisinge instilled fear among the inhabitants of the affected region in Sweden. Following these attacks, wolves in Sweden were hunted to extinction, with few, if any, remaining in the country. While the Wolf of Gisinge was a lone wolf, a pack of wolves in Finland turned hostile between 1880 and 1881, claiming the lives of at least 22 children in the rural area near Turku, Finland. The first attack occurred on January 15, 1880, in Velua village, approximately 37 miles from Turku. The lives of two brothers, Kale and Vil Hornberg, took a tragic turn on a fateful winter's night. The Hornberg family's humble abode stood just a stone's throw away from a dense forest, where nature's untamed beauty intertwined with lurking dangers. On that chilling evening, Kale and Vil, bundled up in their warmest attire, ventured outside their sauna. The crisp night air filled their lungs as they laughed and played, unaware of the impending peril. Suddenly, a deafening howl shattered the serene silence as a majestic yet fearsome wolf emerged from the shadows. In an instant, the wolf sprinted across the vast expanse of the family's potato field, leaping over their weathered fence with ease. Kale, the younger of the two brothers, found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. The wolf's razor-sharp fangs clamped onto his fragile body, snatching him away before anyone could react. Vil, paralyzed by shock, watched helplessly as his brother was whisked away into the night. Overwhelmed by dread, he sprinted back to the safety of their modest home, where their mother anxiously awaited their return. Breathless and trembling, Vil stumbled through the door and managed to relay the harrowing events that had unfolded before his eyes. A desperate determination took hold of Kale's mother as she absorbed the devastating news. With unwavering resolve, she rallied the brave men of the village, and together they embarked on a grim quest to track down the wolf that had torn her family apart. A blanket of fresh snow had fallen, concealing the treacherous path ahead, but traces of Kale's blood painted a haunting trail for the determined group to follow. As they pressed deeper into the wintry forest, the tracks of the wolf became unmistakable, guiding them with an eerie clarity. Half a kilometer away, a horrifying sight awaited them, Kale's severed right leg, torn mercilessly from his young thigh. The grim reality of the situation began to sink in, but they pressed on, fueled by the need for closure and justice. Soon after, Kale's discarded clothes were discovered, a painful reminder of his once vibrant presence. Kale's mother, her heart heavy with grief, pushed forward, a mother's love propelling her through the darkness. And then, amidst the snow-drenched landscape, she stumbled upon more fragments of her beloved son's body. With immense sorrow, she tenderly collected the remnants, gently cradling them within the folds of her large skirt. The horrific tragedy unfolded with heartbreaking certainty. Kale could not have survived the monstrous assault he had become the wolf's prey. The elusive predator managed to elude the relentless pursuit of the trackers, leaving them with a mix of frustration, sorrow, and a renewed sense of urgency. News of a child meeting such a gruesome fate spread like wildfire throughout the region. The tragic incident made headlines in 20 newspapers, prompting unsuccessful wolf hunts and an increased bounty of 75 Finnish marks. The second attack took place. On April 23, 1880, in the village of Vikanen, 32 miles from Turku, two-year-old Johanna vanished while playing in her family's yard. Only her foot was found near the front door, and despite extensive search efforts, her body was never recovered. Just two days after the haunting disappearance of Johanna, in the village of Katerinen on April 25, 1880, tragedy struck as a lone wolf attacked three siblings on their way home. The eldest brother heroically saved the youngest, but their seven-year-old sister, Maria Matilda, was snatched away just steps from their house. Only her skirt and shoe were ever found, leaving the village haunted by the ruthless brutality of the predator. On May 15, 1880, in the village of Karviainen, 18 miles from Turku, tragedy struck the Latvala family. Three-year-old Amanda, known as Mantu, 
fell victim to a vicious creature resembling a big dog while playing outside. With savage ferocity, the creature seized Mantu by the neck, ruthlessly shaking her until life slipped away. It snatched her lifeless body and vanished into the darkness, leaving a trail of horror in its wake. The other children, bearing witness to the unimaginable, fled to their mother, their voices united in a chilling proclamation, the big dog took Mantu. The weight of grief and terror pressed upon the family as they grappled with the cruel reality of yet another loss. In the aftermath, only fragments of Mantu's remains were recovered. Her small shoes, her feet still nestled inside, and the gut-wrenching remnants of her young, innocent form. With the deaths of five children in just four months, the gravity of the situation could no longer be ignored. The governor of the province of Turku recognized the urgent need for action. He called upon the residents of the area, urging them to take matters into their own hands and eliminate any wolves they encountered in a desperate attempt to safeguard their community from further tragedy. In the face of relentless horror, the wolves of Turku continued their rampage, undeterred by the previous hunting efforts. In a tragic continuation of the horror, 17 more children became victims of the ruthless wolves, while at least two others were left injured. The toll on the community was devastating, with a total of 22 innocent lives lost between January 15, 1880, and January 2, 1882. The relentless attacks cast a dark shadow over the region, leaving the community reeling from the profound grief and anguish inflicted by these relentless predators. In a determined quest to bring an end to the reign of terror inflicted by the wolves of Turku, on November 19, 1881, Major Alexander Raymond Turing led a team of nine seasoned Lukashi, professional wolf hunters from Peskov, Russia, along with 15 soldiers divided into three groups. Their mission began on December 10. Rumors circulated that a single formidable female wolf may have been responsible for the spate of deaths in the Turku area. The hunters meticulously pursued their elusive quarry, tracking her footsteps through treacherous terrain. Their arduous efforts bore fruit on January 2, 1882, in Kaitoinen village, when Ivan Pakulja, one of the Lukashi, brought down the aged female wolf. In death, the formidable predator revealed her true stature, large and weathered, her worn teeth testified to a life spent in the relentless pursuit of survival. Her coat, once a vibrant symbol of her prowess but now tangled and tarnished, spoke of the struggles she had endured. The pursuit did not cease there. On January 14, 1882, in Minamaki village, a male wolf believed to be the slain female's mate met his demise. Some accounts credit Madi Hilberg, a crofter's son, while others attribute the wolf's demise to poisoned bait. Regardless, the final blow was dealt, and the menacing presence of the wolves was shattered. In total, 12 wolves fell to the hunter's relentless pursuit throughout that winter, with the Lukashi claiming seven of the kills. As the lifeless bodies of the female and male wolves lay cold, the attacks that had gripped the region ceased. Peace descended upon the land once more, the echo of terror fading into memory. The valiant efforts of Major Turing and his team, combined with the resilience of the communities they protected, brought an end to the era of fear. The wolves of Turku, vanquished by human determination, serve as a testament to the unwavering spirit of those who refuse to succumb to darkness. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon.